In this lesson, we will be looking at periodic functions. As an example, let's look at the estimated daily box office receipts for the movie The Pink Panther, which was released on February 10th of 2006. If we look at the graph, uh, on, on the initial date it was released, there is about a, a little over $1,000 in receipts per theater. After two days, that had risen to just over $2,000 per theater. After five days, it had dropped down to maybe $200 or so dollars per theater. Uh, but then it again rose up to $2,000 per theater on the seventh day. It again dropped back down to $200 per theater on the twelfth day. And it's continuing to rise again as we go to the end of the two weeks. So the key property of a periodic function is that it has a repetitive pattern over a period of time. In this case, the total daily box office receipts are rising and falling between a little over two thousand dollars all the way down to a little maybe around two hundred dollars and it just keeps going up and down and so we want to look at perhaps what period of time does it take for this to happen over and over and over well if you think about a movie more people are going to go during the weekend than during the week and so you're going to have maximum values during the weekend it's going to get lower during the week, and but it's going to keep repeating over and over again. Every weekend, you're going to have these maximums, and so that gives us a period of seven days. If we look at the graph, uh, the revenue on the initial day, zero, is roughly the same that it was on the seventh day, and again, it's the same as it was pretty much on the fourteenth day. And in each of these cases, the revenue is increasing as you go into the weekend. And we can see on the graph that over the 14 days, it covers a two periods. Each period is seven days long. Usually the easiest way to determine a period is by looking at how far apart the maximums are located from each other. Or you could do the same thing with the minimums. Uh, so if we look in this case, we have maximum values, which are again a little over $2,000 per theater, roughly on the second day and then on the ninth day. So 9 minus 2 is 7. Uh, we could do the same thing using the minimums. Uh, we have a minimum on the fifth day and again on the twelfth day. So 12 minus 5 would be 7. So again, our period for this function is seven days, which makes sense to what we would think in the real world. Another component of periodic functions is the median, which represents the middle of all of the data. Uh, we can easily compute the median. It's the maximum value of the function plus the minimum value of the function divided by 2. It's just their average. Uh, in this case, the median is about $1,125 per theater. And related to the median, we have something called the amplitude. And the amplitude represents sort of how tall our function is. So a larger amplitude will give us a taller graph. The amplitude represents the distance from the median to the top or the bottom of the graph. And it's, again, it's pretty easy to compute. If you know the maximum and the minimum value, you subtract them, maximum minus min, and divide by 2. Uh, in this case, the amplitude is about $975. We could say that during the first two weeks of the movie the Pink Panther, the revenue had a range of between $1,125 plus or minus 975 In general, a periodic function has the form y equals a constant a, times the sine of the quantity, another constant, b, times a second quantity, x minus c, which is another constant. And then we close both of those quantities, and we have plus d on the end. And we need to remember what these four constants represent. The a is the amplitude, which was how tall the graph was. b, we can compute by taking 360 divided by the period. And again, the period represented how wide the function was. The C, which we didn't have in this example, uh, represented a horizontal shift. So it, it represents moving the graph left or right. And D represented the median. And another way you could think of the median is it is a vertical shift. Uh, so if we take the information that we already looked at for our Pink Panther uh, movie, we can get the function that the revenue as a function of time equals 975 times sine 
of the quantity 51.43 T plus 1125. And again, T is the days after release. Once you have the function, we can go ahead and graph it using our calculator. Uh, we can go ahead and set the, the window dimensions to be x min equals 0 and x max is 14, since that's our two week period. And we could set y min to be 0 and y max to be 2500. Uh, when you go to the graph, if it looks really spiky, uh, it doesn't look right. Um, all all the, the maximum and minimums and everything are very, very thin, and you get a lot of them throughout your graph. Uh, sometimes that can just be a sign that your calculator is in the wrong mode. What you need to do is go into the mode menu and change it from radians to degrees. And then once you go, once you have it set to degree mode, you should be able to, to get the graph that we had originally. And then once you have the graph, we can use it to answer the basic questions that we've been looking at with any other type of function that we've dealt with. Um, you know, we can find m when minimums and maximums occur. We can substitute values in for x and predict what the function value will be. Or we can compute instantaneous rates of change. All of these are things that we've done with other types of functions. We can now just do them with these periodic functions as well.